All right, so we're gonna start doing the unfold. Uh, so um, to start this assignment, you need to have a pirate map. Okay, it could be anything, it doesn't have to be a pirate map, but just something like that. Um, and I've also downloaded a couple textures that I want to use to give this a look of having a little bit more realism, okay? So one of them is this, which is just like this holy pirate map type thing. And then this one is a bit more simple, okay? Depending on the direction I want to go, if I want it more noisy or dirty or grungy, I go one way and then I go the other way with the other one, all right? Now, um, if you go to textures.com, you can download any of these kinds of things. Um, typically, you'll see ones like this where there is a holy version of it. That's where the transparency is. And then there is a non-hold version of it. Now, the difference is the amount of credits. So this one here, you can download. They're all free um, as long as you're using your free credits. Um, this one is a 1024 by 744, and it's free for one credit. Or the one that doesn't have holes, we can get a bigger image for two credits. Okay, so every day you get 15 credits. It's a free website. You just get 15 credits a day to download stuff. Um, because you guys know Photoshop, I would opt for the medium size and cut the holes out myself. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I did that. Otherwise, you could just download like that one if you wanted to. This one will be grainier, so you won't get as much uh, detail, but um, it's your prerogative. So I'm going to just turn this off. Let me just duplicate this. And delete this one, put this one back up here. Okay, so how I took this and put holes in it is I just went to my select color range. There's a pretty obvious difference in coloration between where the holes are and where they're not. So it's simply a matter of me clicking on this background and then using my plusser right here and then just clicking and dragging. And so what I'm doing is I'm watching this as to where there's still like grain, like over here there's grain, so I can click that. And that definitely helped. I don't want to see a black mat. I just want to see a white mat. There we go. Um, I can also play with the fuzziness to control how much of that map is actually being um, selected. And I want to find something that's just like a good mid-range, like let's say there. That looks good. All right. So now that gives me pretty much where the holes are. Um, I'm going to use my selection tool just to add to these. So I'm just holding down shift and adding to the selection to grab all those other little pieces. Um, there's some extra stuff here. I'm not concerned about that. Cool. So I'm just going to invert, Control Shift I, and then I'll make a layer mask. Okay. So now I have the holes in there. So now I have a bigger image, and now I have holes in it. That's what I wanted. Now to refine it, because there are some spots that I probably don't want still there, I can double click the mask. And then using my select and mask, I can play with the edge detection. So if I hit Smart Radius, and I start pulling this up a little bit, you'll see how it starts to eat away at that edge a bit. Like that. That's good. Um, I could also play with the contrast so I don't get anything that's too like soft because that really doesn't make sense why it would be soft. It would be more contrasty. I can also shift the edge. So if I need to push it in or pull it out more, I can do that here as well. Okay. Um, smooth. Uh, I don't think I need smooth. I definitely wouldn't want to feather it. Contrast is good. I'm going to hit OK. Um, that's good. All right. Now, there is a tiny area right here that I'm just not excited about these black pixels. So I'm just going to go with my, actually, I'll just go with my marquee. I will select these pixels and just fill them with black. There we go. So I'm just control backspacing to fill it with black, or you can go to edit, um, fill, and just do it that way. All right, that's nice. Cool. So then I can save this as a ping, and it will come in with its transparency. Or I can save it as a TIFF with layers, and it'll also come in with its transparency. Uh, paper with holes. There we go. Yes, yes. So I downloaded those. Um, that way I have you know, what I need to start with. Um, at this point, I've already created my folder structure. So just like before, further up, D drive, there, 1900. Uh, I duplicated my template project. I went into my unfold. And I'm going to go into my template folder. Okay. 
Now I'm going to start a new composition. Um, what is our render si our comp size? Excellent, 960 by 540. How many frames per second? 30. And then our duration for this, we don't know yet. Okay. So typically, a, an animation like a fl um, a map unfolding, we don't want it to take forever. So imagine this map unfolding just like psh, like three seconds at the very most is how long this map should take to unfold. So we'll just go with five. That way we have room to play with it at the end if we need to. Okay, so I can double check um, my frames here. If I go to the very end, this is 429, which is you know five seconds pretty much. Uh, and then I can start to bring in my stuff. I should also probably rename this. Um, pirate map original. Let's drop that into my comps. And then I'm going to bring in my artwork. So I just double click down in here. And then I go and find my stuff. Oop. Where am I at? Nope. Too far. There. There. Not there. And artwork. And this one I'll bring in. So this will bring in as a um, TIFF image. And if I double click it, and I look at the transparency, I can verify the transparency came over. Now, sometimes, for whatever reason, After Effects doesn't want to read it. It's not reading it this time. So that's no big deal. I jump back to Photoshop. Uh, it might be because I have this other layer here. Um, that should be good. And I'm just going to apply this um, mask. And then I will save it again. Yes. And then I can just come back here and say reload. Reload. Take those holes, yes. All right, still not reading my transparency, so I will switch formats. Uh, or actually, I'll keep it the same format. I'm just going to control click this and then select save selection. So sometimes, for I don't know why it does it, but sometimes you have to force it by actually creating an alpha channel. Okay, so I just control click this layer and then go to select, save selection, and then save it again. And then let's try this one more time. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to say pre multiply because that means the alpha channel has been, been read. And now if I double click, you can see that I have transparency. Cool, there it is. All right. So it might even be just this version of After Effects that it wants that. Um, they like to change things around. All right, I'm also going to read in my pirate map. So this one, um, because it is an Illustrator document, it's going to be um, give me three options. One is footage, one is composition, retain layer size, and one is composition. So if I go to um, footage, this is going to basically flatten all of the stuff together so it's all like one layer. I don't want that because I want to be able to edit it. If I go to composition retain layer sizes, it'll remember that my boat is this big and my map is that big and then my islands are however big they are. If I go to the bottom one, it basically puts everything at the exact same size. We don't want that, okay? So let me show you just so you can see what each one's gonna do actually inside of After Effects. So I went to footage first. There it goes, it's thinking. Um, it says, do you, it always gives you this too. Do you want to merge the layers? Do you want to change your options? What are you doing? This is a fun new thing that um, the new version of After Effects I'm finding is doing where it just pops open these windows and then I can't do anything. Hmm. Let's close the artwork. Let's close this. Let's close that. Yep, and it's stuck somewhere. Somewhere inside of After Effects, there's a window open that I can't get to. It's weird. All right, there it goes. So I had to click <coughs> something. All right, so this brought in my single image right here, Pirate Map AI. Everything is locked. I can't do anything. There's pointless to even do that, so I'm not going to do that. Let's do that again. And we'll click it. And this one, we're going to do the composition. 
Okay, we don't want composition, we want the middle one, but again, just so you can see it. So this will bring in my pirate map as a comp. Wait, there, there we go. So this is a composition, and then it also brings in each one of the layers. So now if I were just to drag the layers down here, you'll see how it places them like perfectly right in that spot. And that's fine, it puts them right in that spot, that's great. Um, and also if I go to my pirate map um, composition, it's already put all of my stuff right here as well. Okay, but again, if I go to my boat, which is right here, the boat layer is as big as all the other layers, and that doesn't make sense. So again, we don't want that. So I'm going to delete those. And then I will bring it in the correct way, which is composition retain layer size. Typically, like 95% of the time, you're going to use composition retain layer sizes. Rarely do I use footage, and rarely do I use the other one. Okay, Occasionally I will, but rarely do I. So composition retain layer size. It's going to bring it in in the same fashion. So we'll see a composition. We'll see a folder. Here's the comp. Here's the folder with all the different layers. Now watch when I drag these into my new comp into my composition I created. Is that it centers everything. Okay. So before when I drug all those layers in, it automatically made sure they were in the exact spot they were inside Illustrator. Here because every layer or every object is already resized, it puts everything right at the center. So my boat is right there. And then my plus, or my islands are right there. My letter X is right here, okay? So um, typically you will not do that. You will not just drag your stuff down. Typically you will open up the pirate map composition and then this already has it set up. That's how it looked like in Illustrator. That's how we want to start playing with this, okay? So now I can grab these if I need to and then copy it and paste it into the other one and now everything is lined up, okay? So now I'm just gonna drag this into my compositions, drag this into my artwork, cool. Now, if something changes, we don't like the boat, we want to change the colors of the boat, we can't do that in After Effects without turning some stuff on and off. Uh, I can go back to Illustrator, I can recolor all of my stuff as long as I save it as the exact same name on the exact same layer, After Effects will instantly recognize and instantly update to my new colors. So if I pick blues and yellows and whatever, all those colors will then update, okay? Uh, if I decide to change the name of my file, After Effects will not read that as a same thing and it'll have to be re-imported again. If I put it on a new layer, it will not read the new layer. I have to re-import just that layer. So let's pretend that I just recolored my boat and it's not reading my new color of the boat because I put it on a different layer. When I go to import the pirate map again, that's where I will use footage. And then I will say composition, um, oops, sorry, not composition, footage, uh, choose layer. I'll pick the boat and then I'll make sure this is set to layer size. So that is typically the only time I need to use that footage one is when I have to go here and pick a specific layer, okay? So typically anything you're doing in this case, you want to do basically at the front of this, it makes it easier instead of having to go through and do this. Because if I had five new layers I had to bring in, I have to do this to five layers, okay? So I don't need to do that, so I'm gonna hit cancel. If for whatever reason After Effects doesn't update something um, or something changed. Let's say my boat layer is now called boats layer because I have two boats on there. Um, it may not recognize that. I can right click, replace the footage, and then go find that same way. Here's the footage. Here is the layer that I want. And then layer size and hit OK. Okay. So then again, you could replace a specific layer with something else. All right. Those things will come up. Don't worry about it. Um, we're not going to worry about at the this second animating the pirate map. Typically, I wait till the end of that, so the end of the um, unfolding, and then we get to the animation of the pirate map stuff. Uh, what I want to do is just set up what is this going to look like. Okay, so here's my scene. I'm going to go to my artwork and I'm going to drop in my paper with holes, and I'll resize this so that it fits. And I don't want to resize this a crazy amount because if I go, obviously, just like that, it looks stupid. Um, this seems to be an appropriate amount. Okay, right to the edges, pretty much. Like, kind of. 
And if I cut something off, it's not a huge deal because again, this is like a map with holes in it. So that's cool. So I'm gonna go switch to my modes here. And then if I change this to a multiply, you'll see how now my pirate map has that little effect on top of it, okay? Now, if I look at the transparency for this, you'll see that the transparency is not transparent at all. Like right here, it should be transparent. So I have to tell my background, which is my water, to read the transparency from the map and use that as transparency for this whole thing. So if I go to um, this water layer, I go to my effects, I go to channel, I say set mat. This is pretty much the same thing as doing these track mats, except we're able to pick which layer we want it to affect. So I'm gonna say that I want my water to get its information or its transparency from the paper with holes. And then uh, source, yes, and alpha channel, yes. Now we're gonna get um, this to happen on it because I scaled it and moved it and whatever else, it's doing that, that's not a huge deal. Um, just so you can see, if I turn this back to normal, um, we're still getting, I'll turn the transparency on, we're still getting this kind of like offset look here because I had to move that layer. And as I move this, you'll see that that mask doesn't really update. Okay, I'll put that back to where it was. Um, so what I have to do is I have to pre-compose this. When you pre-compose something, it basically like flattens it out so that it's not reading any of the positions or anything like that. So I just pre-compose this map. I'm gonna say move all attributes to the new layer. Um, this is paper with holes. Okay. So now what it should be doing It's reading the paper, yes. It's reading it as it was sent. Okay. Alpha channel. We're not scaled or repositioned. Um, let me try reposing. Oh, actually, one second. Um, I can't do it just to the water. That's one of my issues. I have to do that to the entire thing. So I'm also gonna pre-compose all of these layers. And this is my pirate map. Uh, let me see where it's at. Again, moving all my components, hit okay. Uh, and now I can use that set mat. So paper with holes, perfect. Cause that way it'll actually like bleed through the rest of it, which is what we want. I'll set this to multiply, there we go. So now like my island before, a second ago, wouldn't have had a hole in it because it was on a separate layer. I had to do a set mat to each one of those. Now it's like that. Um, I could also change the opacity of my uh, treasure map. That way it doesn't affect it as much as it was doing before. You can also play with the different modes that are in here. So you may find that one of these might look better than the other ones. Typically these are the darker ones that you would want to use. Right, multiply, it seems like that's the best one for this specific instance. Yes, cool, and then I'll pull that up some. There we go, cool. So now there's no animation on this. This is simply just my map like that. Um, I may also want, let's say, fold lines on here, uh, but we can do those fold lines after. All right, so there's my pirate map original. So now what I need to do is I need to create a separate composition where I am able to unfold this entire thing. So I'm gonna make a brand new composition. I'm gonna call it unfolded map, because that's the map, the one we're gonna unfold. 960 by 540, 30, five seconds, yes. Make sure it's in the correct one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down the original pirate map as the one that has this. That's the one where the map looks like it's all together like that. It's not just the paper with holes. It's not just the pirate map. It's not the pieces, it's the original one. So on the unfolded map, I'm gonna drop down the original one. So now this is all in one layer, okay? So everything's like joined together. Um, so now what I need to do is I need to unfold this. So the way that all those maps work that we just saw 
is that they're broken up into tiny pieces. And each one of those pieces, just like the box and just like the little um, sign flapping thing, are all separate pieces. Now what I don't want to do is, um, I don't want to make a million pieces. I don't want to make very few pieces. I want to have a good amount of pieces on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to my grids. So if I go down here to grid, these are super tiny pieces. We do not want these super tiny pieces. So I'm going to go to my preferences under grid. There it is. And I'm not going to subdivide, so I'll turn that to 1. And I want grid lines, let's say, every um, 150. There we go. So that seems like an appropriate amount of grids for this thing. Okay. Now you could spend a little bit of time. Let me change the color too, because we probably can't see it very good. Let's do better. There we go. Um, you could spend a little bit of time figuring out exactly what a number here would be, so that you don't have this tiny piece at that point. Um, you could definitely do that, but I think this is going to work uh, good enough for us. All right. So now what I have to do is I have to draw a mask in each one of these areas, and then I have to start to unfold this thing, okay? Because each one of these is going to be a separate piece. And just like the box, each one of these is going to be something that we're going to manually animate. So, it's mm, good. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So if there's four going down like this and there's seven going across like that, any guesses how many layers I need to have for this? 28. How many did you say? Yeah, so it'll be 28 because it's seven and then seven, seven, seven. So I'm going to just duplicate this until I get to 28. No, it's just going to look nicer if they are all the same size. I mean, it's not a huge deal if we have like a little tab. Yeah. So imagine like your map that you have in the, you know, imagine that you had a, a 1980s car and you looked in the glove box and it had a map in there. That thing would have the boxes all the same size and that makes life a little bit nicer. Okay. Now this is the part that people are going to get confused on because it happens every semester. Um, these things are all on top of each other. So if I were to cut out one of these shapes, I wouldn't see that happen because all the layers are already there. For instance, if I go to layer number one, I go to my mask tool and I just did that, nothing happened. But it did happen because if I go to this, which is my solo, I can see that it cut it out, okay? So to make life a little bit easier, there you go, I'm going to turn off all the eyeballs Okay, so I can hit Control A, click an eyeball, and they all go away. And then if I just draw one at a time, that makes things a little bit simpler. Okay, so I'm going to go to this one, and I'm going to go to my rectangle tool, and I want to marquee this, and I want this to snap. You'll see that there's no snapping right now. It's just kind of like loosely there. So under one of my tools view, um, there's a snap to grid. So now when I click and drag, it's snapping it right to the grid, okay? So then I can turn this one off, turn the next one on, make sure I click it, and then draw the next one. Okay, turn this one off, turn that one on, click it, and then draw the next one. Okay, so this will be probably the most tedious step of this is just lining these up and then remembering what was the last one I did? That one. And then if you make a mistake, all we have to do is delete the mask, and then you can redraw it again. There we go. Okay. So I'm not going to draw the rest of these yet. Okay, I will let you guys, the steps are, go through and draw the mask on each one of those layers all the way down. Um, I'm going to go to the next step in the sequence um, after you've cut everything out. And the next step is to actually make it unfold. Okay. Um, let me try something real quick just to see. Nope. I went there. Uh, that might actually.
to work. All right, hold on a second. I think I might have found a better way to do that. Let me just delete those. So here's my next seven. So I'm just going to duplicate the next seven and then pull these below it. There we go. And then if I hit the mask and then I click on the mask for each one of these using the control key, I may be able to just drag the mask, oops, drag the masks down. Nope. Where am I? Oh, I need to click on mask path. That's what I want to click on. Sorry, mask path. Still didn't want to work. Come on, get to the bottom. No, it doesn't like me doing two at a time, that's why. Fine. So I'll grab this one and then I can just drag it down. Nope. Yeah, that's working. It's just the same shape, that's what's weird. So I'm gonna grab this one, drag that down. This one, drag that down. So I'm not drawing the same path, I'm just moving that one down. And that makes my life a little bit easier. Okay, you don't have to do it this way. Again, you could do it um, drawing them one at a time. The biggest thing to make sure of when you do something like that is that you don't actually drag the map down. Like I wouldn't want to grab this piece and drag that piece down because that's not what the shape is, okay? So that would screw up the map because then the next piece would not match up with this one. It's kind of like if I took this piece and drug that down there, that doesn't make sense of where that line just went, okay? Uh, we used to do it a little bit different before where we would actually do this checkerboard, but people got even more confused with that, so we just didn't use that. All right, so let's try this again. There's my masks. Click that one. Drag it down to the shift key. Oh yeah, it's going much quicker. If I had a touch screen, it would probably go a lot quicker too. Or maybe one day I'll just save my files from previous semesters and just open those. Uh, duplicate that, scoot it down to the bottom. And you'll see how I'm organizing these so that the very top left is my first one and then um, it goes to the right and so on. It just again makes your life easier keeping your stuff organized. So by the time you're done, you should have a the exact map that we had before. There should look no different from what we originally had. If there is a difference, you've probably moved one of your masks into the wrong spot. Not a huge deal, except you have to fix it. Okay, cool. So now I can turn my grid off just so we can double check. Everything looks nice and smooth. Again, if there was an issue, it would look something, oh, let me move this one down like that where there's just a random shape here that doesn't really make sense as to where it's going or what it's doing there. Usually it's even just a hair like this. Like that's an issue, okay? So you always wanna make sure they're nice and tight down there. All right, cool. So I can hide all those. Now, this is gonna be a 3D unfold. That's the name of the assignment. So we're going to um, obviously make everything a 3D layer. So Control A, click 3D layer, everything becomes a 3D layer. Now we have to figure out how we want this to unfold, okay? <clears throat> because we have all these pieces, if you remember the one, it just kind of like unfolded like accordion style. We don't want that because that's just straight across. We want to basically find a center point and the map unfolds from the center point, okay? Kind of like origami type stuff. So these four pieces here are gonna be the center of this animation. Um, I could even make these six pieces the center because that looks like that's, you know, kind of ish, more center, whatever. Um, so this piece here, I'm gonna put its pivot right there. And this piece, its pivot is gonna be right there. This piece, its pivot's gonna be right there. You'll see where the pivot is always at that same spot because that's the center of my document. All right, so these four, their pivots are all in the same spot because they're gonna all rotate from the same spot and open up, okay? So let me animate those real quick. Now. Once I've gotten to this point where I have these things, I'm going to save this real quick. Um, I have these things lined up. Now I want to start reorganizing my layers so that it's more by um, 
where they're animated versus where they are in this lineup here, okay? So these are gonna be the first to be animated, so they're gonna be at the very top of my layer list. I'm gonna go to my rotate, and then I will just decide, oops, uh, yeah, that's right. I'm gonna decide which uh, one I want to rotate. So this one here, because of where the pivot is, I can rotate it like this, so front and back like that. Let me turn off this adaptive right here, that's annoying, there we go. Um, I can rotate it in the Y direction. Um, the Z direction, not so much, okay? Because that goes like uh, into the other piece. So I'm either gonna use X or Y for this piece. So I'm gonna start off with it rotated back. So it may take just a little playing around before you get used to it, but this is rotated back like behind the screen. This is rotated forward in front of the screen. So you can see how the, the perspective of it is a little bit leaning forward. Again, something people get confused about. Um, you really want these to come from the back so that they don't pop into scenes. So I'm gonna rotate it until it's about flat, and then I'm gonna set a keyframe. I'm gonna go up to about 10 frames, and then put it back to zero. So that's all the animation is for that one, okay? Then I'm gonna copy that animation, and then I can go down here to my next piece and see, maybe this will be the same thing. Yeah, I can do the same thing with that one. So then I'm just gonna rewind, click on my X rotation, and paste it. So now those both pieces have the same exact animation. Okay, then I'm gonna go down to my next piece. This one will not be the same. So this one is gonna be going this way behind it, and then coming out like that, okay? So this one's gonna start off at like positive 91, or right, 90, and then still going to zero. Again, I'm gonna copy the animation, I'm gonna rewind it and paste it on the other one. So this is what I have so far. It just goes like that. Okay, now if I wanna give this a little bit more fanciness to it, on those first four pieces, because of where their pivot is, I could also rotate them in the Y direction. Okay, so you can see how they're rotating like this direction as well. Um, I couldn't do much to them, but I could do a little bit. So just for testing out purposes, let's go to the Y direction there. Oops, let me rotate it up a little bit. There we go. And I'll go to this and then set that to zero. And let's see what that looks like. All right, I actually wanna go negative 32 or positive 32. So now you feel like that piece is kind of like coming into the frame a little bit nicely, okay? So I'll do the same thing with the other one. I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it here. And I know that the 32, it's just a matter of positive or negative as to how it's gonna be coming out onto the screen. So positive, it was coming from this top right direction. I didn't want that, I wanted it to come from this direction. So now, oops, I didn't set it to zero at the end. Well, Fold like that, that's cool. I'll do the same thing on these ones. Yeah, now you can see these ones are actually like crossing, so maybe I don't wanna do that here. Maybe I want this to be negative 32. Yeah. Um, and then this one will be zero see what that looks like. Yep, they still look like they're connected at least enough. There's a little bit of a gap right there, but that'll be fine. Cool. And then I'll do the same thing on this one. Cool. So now it looks like they're unfolding from that spot. Okay, so all I've done is animated the X rotation going from um, either negative or positive 90, depending on the piece, to zero and then animated the X going from negative or positive 32 to zero. So that's all that's doing. So now when I get to these other pieces on the outside, now I have to go through and figure out how those are gonna unfold. So if these are my first four pieces unfolding, what do you think the next pieces are gonna be that unfold? Yeah, the ones around them. So it'll be this one, 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 and that one. Okay, so those are gonna be my next eight pieces. So I'm gonna take those and move those up. 
so right there. So the first four are my original center pieces. The next eight, which are right here, are the next pieces that will be animated. Now, depending on the pieces, um, depends on where the pivot is. So if this piece here comes out, which piece do you think it's going to be connected to? Yeah, this one here. So I just need to move the pivot so it's right there. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter if it's way over here, way over here. As long as it's at the center point or on that bottom line, it's good. So now I'm going to go through and just move the pivot. So whichever piece it was touching, that's the pivot that it gets, or that's the um, direction that it gets. So you'll see how I'm just moving the pivot right to those edges. And again, this is something that people typically get confused about because of just the nature of moving pivots and rotating things and whatever else. And that 11 is going to be down here. And then 12 will be also down there. Cool. All right. So then I'm just going to go back to number five and then rotate it. Now these ones I'm not going to rotate rotating the other direction. It's just going to be the one direction that it rotates up. Uh, but it's still going to be the same process of this rotating just in the backwards to the frontwards. So right here, I'm going to set a key. I'll go up to 10 frames. I'll set it to zero. I can copy this because I'm pretty sure the one next to it will probably be the same thing. And make sure I move that back. Yep, that works. So now I'll go to the next ones in the list. This one here. So this one would rotate. Oops. I missed the pivot on that one. Uh, this one will rotate in the Y direction. Again, coming from the back. And then going up to 10. Those. Perfect. Again, I can copy the Y and then paste it to the other one. Now, when I pasted this one, it's coming from the front. It's not coming from the back. It always has to come from the back. So negative 83, most likely. Yep, good enough. It doesn't have to be perfectly you know, invisible, but it has to be pretty close to that. Cool. And then we hide those. We go to the next ones. You'll see the process is pretty repetitive. It's just a matter of going to the next one and going to the next one. So now we'll go to this one, and then again I will paste the animation on the x direction. Oops, sorry, the y direction. <coughs> and then the y direction, and then again make this one negative 83. That is not a fun thing that After Effects is doing. If I have both keys selected, it's like resetting the other key too. It's never done that before. Cool, that works. And then I'll those go to the next two these ones will rotate in X so I rewind it paste my X mm, can't really see what this one's doing but let me watch the animation yeah that looks good it's coming from the back this one will do the same thing cool all right so now we have that chunk taken out so what's going to be the next ones animated? The ones around that, right? It'll be continuously circled. So if you had a lot of pieces, like let's say a million, you would still start off at the center and you would work your way out. Or you could start off at one corner and work your way this way. For something like this, it works great just going from the middle, okay? Um, now with this one, the pivots are going to get a little bit trickier because this one here could pivot from this piece or it could pivot from that piece, okay? So it's up to me to decide which piece I want to go with that. So I'm going to just put the pivot right in the corner. That way, if I decide to change my mind later, I can do that. OK, so those are in the corner. I'll move this one to the corner as well. And then this one to the corner as well. That one's good. Um, this one here will be exactly on the side. This one here will be exactly on the side. This one will be on the side. I don't think I have a top and bottom one anymore. Those. Yep, those are gone. All right, so um, there was four, and then eight, so that's 12. Oops, I never grabbed them. That's the problem. I need to grab these. No, I do have a top and bottom, don't I? I did. I'm dyslexic. 
I'm going to fix that pivot to somehow get it to that point. So this will go right here. And again, if you have trouble seeing where things are at, um, there's lots of different ways we could organize our After Effects files to, to do that. So if I grab all these ones, which are the center, I can pick a different color. So those ones are bright orange. The next row out are these. These ones are green. The next row out, that's too far. Uh, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, it should be them, right? Uh, the next one selected there, there we go. Uh, that one would be a lavender, sure. Okay, so now I have different colors that would show me exactly like this is the next iteration going out. All right, so now I'm gonna go to this one and do the same exact thing that I did. Um, now, because this is a corner one, again, I could think about maybe I wanna do two directions. I wanna do the Y direction and the X direction. Uh, I could do that as well. So if I just paste this, and then I update this value to a negative 83, that works. Um, I could also paste this, I think, in the Z direction, the Y direction, there we go. And then just kind of see how that comes in. Yeah, that looks good. Cool. All right, so I did two directions on that one. Again, you don't have to do two directions, but it's just, it adds a little bit of fanciness to it. So I'm gonna paste this in the Y, paste this in the X, and then just animate them. Oh, look at that, you know, already. It needs to be adjusted slightly, rotated down some, and then slightly rotated inside up here. And you can hand uh, animate each one of these. You don't have to copy paste keyframes. I'm doing that just because it makes it easier. This one's pivot got off, so let's move that. You, uh, if you screw up the pivots, you have to undo your keyframes, otherwise it doesn't work, or delete your keyframes. So this one will be the Y direction, because that's what's facing that same axis. Yep, that's good. Go to the next one. And I just need to make this negative because it's coming at from the front. And again, if you don't see that initially, you will after you've done it as many times as you're gonna do it here. To rotate, go back to the Y, paste this, paste this, make this one negative. There we go. Eight. And then we come back down to the next section. And you'll see it's, it's just so um, tedious versus difficult once you understand the process of it. Paste, paste. Great. And then I'll check it out. Uh, that one looks good. Maybe not. Uh, I don't want this one rotating from the bottom. That looks weird. Maybe go to the up like this. There we go. All right. Okay. So you get the idea. I should just do the last bit, shouldn't I? Or no, I'll save the last bit. So I'll just do that one right there. The rest of it's the same process. Okay. Uh, if you get confused and you're not sure what a piece is doing, use the isolate. So if I isolate just one piece, I ignore everything else that's in the scene and I'm just focused on that. And I can really just kind of watch that one piece and make sure I know what that piece is doing. Unisolate, isolate another one, <clears throat> and then I could again watch it to make sure I know what it's doing. Okay, I get, people get confused in these kinds of things, so that's how you do it. All right, so everything is animated. It looks like a 3D box opening, right? Somebody say no. Yeah, correct. Uh, it doesn't look like a 3D box opening at all. It looks like just a bunch of pieces rotating. So what was the trick that we did on the other ones to get them to actually look like they're connected? Parenting, right? So when do I parent it? Over here? Over there, right? So we make sure it's completed and then we parent. Now this is an area that, again, we have to make sure we parent the right things to the right things. So in that box, um, we parented all the pieces except for one to that top piece, and then that one piece just went to the one that was touching it, right? Same thing here. Whichever one that these pieces are going to be coming off of or going to be connected to, that's the one they get parented to. So this piece right here is going to get parented to this piece right there, okay? So I'm going to go to that piece there, and that's uh, layer 16. This is layer 8. 
So I'm going to go to layer 16 and say you're parented to layer 8. This one is layer 18. He's going to get parented to 10. So 18 will get parented to 10. Um, if I go to layer 10, that one's going to get parented to 4. So I go to 10, 4. If I go to this one, which is 8, that will get parented to 2. So layer 8, you get parented to 2. Right? So now if we watch, if we just watch the ones that uh, are doing something, So those are the only ones I've parented so far. So if we watch just those, you'll see how this looks like it's kind of unfolding from one layer. Okay, so that's that's part of what we're doing, right? Let me undo that again. There we go. Make sure I'm at the end, and then we do the other one. So this one here is going to be parented to 20. It's going to be parented to 10. If I go down to 20, you're parented to 10. I go to this one, which is 12. He's parented to 4. So 12 gets parented to 4. And again, once you understand the process, it's not difficult. It's just a tedious thing to do. This is why um, people write scripts for After Effects, because this whole process becomes that much easier when you have a script automating it. Uh, this one is 19. We parented 9. This one is 17. He gets parented to 9. So you'll see some of these will be parented to the same one. 15 will be parented to 7. And by the time you're done, all of these layers, except these middle four, should have something they're parented to. Okay, Because everything's going to be connected except for these four. Uh, 14 will be connected to, and this is my choice, this one or that one. Okay, So I'm going to put it on this one. Um, 14 will be parented to 8. Uh, 6 will be parented to 2. 7 gets parented to 1. 13 gets parented to 5. 7 will get parented to 1. Five will get parented to also one. There we go. Cool. All right. So now they're all parented together. So now if we rewind this and we hit play, we get that. Okay. So now this again does not look very good because all of these pieces are basically on top of each other right from the beginning. Okay. Uh, so I need to do two things. One, I'm going to save, and then I'm going to save as uh, because I'm going to need to come back to this. Um, one thing I need to do is we've never done anything with our keyframes. Uh, so I need to hit U on my keyframes. I need to grab all my keyframes. And I need to make them easy ease. And I need to, um, I don't think I need to play with that. Let's see. No, I think that's fine. Just easy ease them. You don't have to do anything in the graph editor. But um, so that's good. So now I have to decide on the order that I actually see these things. So right now everything is basically at the same exact spot, opening up and unfolding. What should happen is the center opens up, and then the next row opens up, and then the next row opens up. That'll make things look a lot nicer. So if I just take these four here and leave them where they're at, then I take these. And I scoot them down to, let's say, 10. And then I take these, and I scoot these down to 20. What should happen is the first row is going to open up, then the second row, and then the third row. And then we'll fix it so it doesn't look so staticky. So boom, boom, boom. And I noticed a mistake, too. Look at that. So this one here is on top of my stuff. He should not be on top of my stuff. So I have to fix that real quick before I forget about it. He should be behind it. No. There we go. Let's see what that does. Whoa, that's a messed up piece. Okay. 
If you mess up a piece, then you can just uh, delete the keyframes and then redo those. But I think for, I think I'm just gonna delete the Y keyframes and just put that back to zero. That way this can now be negative 89, and that will be in the back, and now we'll connect. And now I can fix the Y. So I'm gonna go here, So now easy ease that, so it's nice and easy. All right, so now uh, we'll turn the grid off so we don't have to see that anymore. Okay, so now we get that. Very cool. There's something happening there, I'll figure that out later. It's most likely it just needs to be rotated. Um, where's that piece? Uh, later I meant right now, apparently. Here. Nope. There it is. So I'm just rotating it back in the x direction, just so it's a little bit more behind it. And now it's going to come out a little bit nicer. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So now that gives us, like I said, a very staticky kind of animation because it does one, two, three. We don't want that. We want it to look like it's completely unfolding. So what we do is we take these layers and we just stagger them. So one, two, three, four, instead of them all being at the same spot, I'm just going to offset one, two, three, and four, just like that. And then these ones, same thing. I'm just going to offset these a bit. And then I'll offset these a bit. Now, if I get to the point where something looks weird, I'll fix it. But for right now, I think that should be good. Okay, so let's see how much better that looks compared to what we just had a second ago. Much better. Much more interesting than what we had, right? Cool. I don't see anything crazy happening here. I'm not thrilled on how this piece is popping in right there. And the way that I fix that is I go to its original startup rotation and I just rotate it more so it starts like that. That way it looks like it's coming from behind it versus just popping into frame. Okay, and then obviously I would do the outer ring too the same exact way, right? So that should give you plenty to digest and to go through that. It may take you an entire class just to lay out the masks and get the rotates in the right spot. Um, this assignment, like I said, can be confusing because we're dealing with so many different factors that go into getting it to do this. But once we do, you saw those examples of how those maps can unfold. And then what's really neat about this is once we have this set up, um, all we have to do then is go to our pirate map and animate this thing, okay? And any animation I do to this will then apply to, where am I at? Right here. It'll apply, to, nope, not right there. Unfolded map, there it is. It'll apply to this map, okay? It won't yet. Um, if you'll notice that my pirate ship, even though I've moved it, no, I didn't move it. Let's say I move it right there, and I go back to my unfolded map. Okay, it is in the right spot. Give me a second to prove myself wrong. Oh, uh-huh, because it's in the middle. Hold on, I'm not doing it right. <laughs> it's over here. Unfolded map. All right, uh, why are you doing this to me? Let me animate it real quick and then I won't be such an, so much of a liar to me. Um, there we go. Okay, so there you go, just across. We're gonna animate it different, but just so you can see. So now we come here. There goes the boat. See what he's doing? Right? Okay, we'll fix that later, but just so you know, that's the stages we're gonna be. That's an easy <laughs> fix. <laughs> okay. Cool. So uh, first step, bring your map in, set it up with the grungy type thing, and then you're gonna start doing the cutting out each one of those squares and then laying your pivots and then animating the rotation. 
keep it simple. It's we're literally just animating these things rotating in 3D. That's all we're doing. Okay. Um, make sure that all your rotations are good before you go on to the next step, because if you start parenting things and then your stuff isn't good, like for right now, in order for me to do those other pieces, um, it's going to be confusing because all of these pieces are now offset. They're already parented to things, so I won't know where the pivots are. So I would basically want to reset all my positions, unparent everything, and get that back. And in order to do that, I have to go to the very end. I have to unparent everything again, which means I have to do it again. Go back to here, realign everything, and then I can do these other pieces. And then I can offset again, and then I can rotate and rotate. Okay, cool. No questions yet, I'm sure. All right. <laughs> yes? No? All right.